Joining me now is Kellyanne Conway, former senior counselor to President Trump, Molly Hemingway, editor-in-chief of The Federalist, and Charlie Hurt, Washington Times opinion editor, all Fox News contributors. Kellyanne, uh, let's start with you. This is kind of a, a, a tale of two elections um, made clear tonight. Fox officially called Arizona for Katie Hobbs, who refused to debate, of course, uh, in that race for governor. Um, and yet, the GOP is flipping seats. I just got back from California, uh, flipping seats there. So what's your read right now, tonight, as things stand? Well, a few things. A lot has been said in the last week since the election. One thing that hasn't been said is something that we know about voters as pollsters of decades, which is when there is chaos and crisis in the grocery basket, at the gas pump, in Ukraine, at the southern border, in our communities because of rising crime, people have two choices, Laura. They can either do what many presume they would do, which is throw them all out and start over, or they say, there's so much crisis and uncertainty, I can't invite more of it into our lives. And they kind of stick with what they know. I, we did a project with Biden disengagers. And those are people who have a disapproval rating of his. They should be for him or they should be independent. They're sort of, they're truly swing voters. The independents that ended up breaking for Democrats, 49, 47, which went against history and the trend of going for the party out of power by double digits. And we saw the Biden engagers. They were convinced the Democrats didn't have what it took, but Republicans never really finished the sentence. You have to earn the win and finish the sentence. Now, in the House, just very quickly, Kevin McCarthy did the commitment to America. I, I have September. to say, I jump in there. I know Newt th thinks it's great. I found it very general. I found it was like a lot of headlines with, there was no meat on those bones. And I know you can't like have a specific bill. I get that. Right. It was 500 words front and back. But you know what yeah. it did? It I, gave, I, it gave the, it gave people something other than you're just not the Democrat you're against. Did it? You, you're, well, it Do you think have. the results say If they articulate it. Yeah. Well, we, well, yes. I'm timing. sorry. We're going to get the house and we, and we flipped yeah. seats in New Jersey, New York, Oregon, and because very few incumbents lost. Because okay. of that? Okay. Well, because of the money. Clearly the house didn't do enough but they are going to get the majority, it yep. looks like. And this is something where they also gained seats in 2020. And you don't see the kind of war with the Republican voter in the House that you see in the Senate. So Senate leadership clearly just disdains Republican voters. They're blaming them for their own failures to actually secure some of these victories. They offered nothing, as you pointed out, over the last two years, no resistance to the Biden agenda, no alternate vision, uh, unlike Kevin McCarthy, Mitch McConnell said famously that he didn't think that you needed to have any plan. Right. It was just sufficient that Joe Biden was bad enough. That was clearly not true. This is a man who also went to war against the Tea Party, saying he would crush the Tea Party from 2010 to 2014. Many of the problems we're dealing with are his war against the voter. For a Republican Party to thrive, it needs to be unified. You need to have the establishment and the voters. They should be providing mm. candidates who both people like. They should be actually trying to win instead of sabotage. You know, Mitch McConnell sabotaged Blake Masters, who came very close to winning. He gave no money because he didn't like that Blake Masters had criticized him. That's not leadership. Well, they, he was also supporting uh, Chuck Morse in New Hampshire before Bulldog. He did, you know, so that was also tough in New Hampshire. I mean, I'm not saying Bulldog was the greatest candidate, but... It was tough. Like, Kelly, I think your, your point is good. McCarthy tried to, you know, put a blueprint out there, but I think it was McConnell and McCarthy, they were almost, they weren't, weren't in sync. And so I think the voters were, I don't know, jump in here. I well, thought they were not getting a, a message from the Republican well, Party that was unified. The Democrats are pretty unified. They love what they're doing. Well, clearly not. I mean, you know, polling shows that the number one issue for most voters out there was the economy. And Voters trust Republicans by double digits on the economy, and yet uh, Republican politicians failed to close the deal with them, and that's a real problem. In terms of Mitch McConnell, you know, you can either bring a clarion message to the table, or you can bring uh, brilliant background, pol uh, you know, policy, uh, you know, procedures, which is what uh, Mitch McConnell has always been sort of celebrated for. But you can't. Th this is this is massive failure. And he is, he, you know, he's been in leadership for 20 years. He has been the leader for 16, 17 years. Um, and, uh, you know, at some point, we, what does somebody around here have to do to get fired? 
I mean, the, well, we talk the, about accountability a lot in the Republican Party. We say we got to have metrics. It's got to be an objective metrics. He did a great job in keeping Merrick Garland off that Supreme Court. I will be forever grateful for and Mitch McConnell and lots of judges that he worked with Donald Trump and putting on the court. And yet Chuck Schumer has about that same record with judges. Right now. And nobody's going out saying Chuck Schumer is some mastermind with judges because they get more than just judges with Chuck Schumer. They get a whole agenda and they get victory. And he goes on TV. He goes on and TV he and he'll argue the, the point. And speaking of Kellyanne, because you're a message person, Kellyanne's brilliant at it. Senator Schumer had so-called advice, so-called advice for GOP leadership. The answer mm -hmm. is for the Republican leadership, uh, those non-MAGA ones, to break with the MAGA party and work with us. Let's, America would breathe such a sigh of relief if they saw that happening. They liked it this summer, but we need to do more. And I'm willing to reach out. <laughs> We Kelly. didn't ask him for his advice. And the one the one uh, poisonous word that I thought Donald Trump had done away with forevermore in the Republican Party that reared its head this year, Laura, is electability. It is a fiction. It pretends I know if you will or won't win long before the voters exercise their voice and choice. Um, voters don't ask who can win. Voters ask who can lead. And their definition of leadership is very different. Excuse me, Mitch McConnell this summer said in August, I have great confidence in Oz. He was endorsed by Trump in April. Uh, Come November, we're supposed to go back a year and say, oh, my God, he shouldn't have been the candidate. Uh, and it just goes on and on from there. Obviously, I was for a different candidate in the primary. But once you have, once the voters speak, you have to do all you can to support them financially, message-wise, tactics. But we're getting beat at tactics. Look, I, I, can, I can feel self, I, I'm a self-respecting Republican and conservative in this way. We didn't go and lie and scare the voters in our closing arguments. They didn't talk about inflation and crime because they have no good message. They had to go out there in a sugar high, the political one-night stand with Obama and, and Hillary and the Clinton, the Bidens, who, not Biden, saying what? Telling people democracy will be over, Hitler, Nazis, and all of that. Well, they At fight to the finish. Message, what do but, we do? But look, I think we got a lot of first time Kansas time. We should run again. They recruited a ton of minority. Tudor candidates. Dixon, I think, did a great candidates. job in Michigan. And the people party there is trashing again. her, by the way. People the party's trashing again. her. People yeah. should run again. And I think Tiffany Smiley did a good I mean, she didn't get any real support, and that did puts she? puts a lot of this notion that the problem is candidate quality. You have people like Tudor Dixon, oh, Dixon or, yeah. you, or Carrie Lake. Tremendous candidate. But I do think there is an issue with leadership quality. Leadership quality seems to be where the Matters. Republican Party is really failing. And Mitch McConnell, who does have only, like, the latest poll says 7 percent of Americans support him, is routinely the least popular national politician. He picks weird sides to things. Like, one of the things he got really involved in was helping Liz Cheney this year, after she went to war against the Republican Party. This, he just doesn't seem to... Well, he definitely agrees with Liz Cheney more than he agrees and, with the MAGA movement or, or America First or Populism, correct? Right, and to that I end... I mean, that's not even a close know, Liz, call. Liz Cheney had kind of a good year with this year with her meddling in, in elections. He supports Liz Cheney. This is at odds with where the yeah. Republican Party and their voters... Do you disagree with that, Kellyanne, that Mitch I, McConnell agrees more with, with, with Liz Cheney on foreign policy, trade, and immigration than he does with the, the Donald be, Trump Republicans. He's not going to have an opportunity to work with her anymore because she's gone, as are a lot of the members of the January 6th committee. So I would just um, slightly and politely correct that because the January 6th committees either were forced to resign or lost in their primaries or the election. Elaine Loria lost in Virginia. And I think it's it's in large part because people got tired of that as well. But he, here's something I, I just want to say. Um, is anybody asking Joe Biden to step aside for Gretchen Whitmer? It's like they love to tell us who our nominees should be. <laughs> Is anybody, did anybody tell them in 2020 when 25 people were running, you can't have the old guy, you can't have uh, the woman who lied about her ethnicity for 34 years, you can't have the socialist woman, you can't have the American Samoa, who, by the way, was Tulsi Gabbard, not Elizabeth Warren, just so we're clear. I mean, they like to meddle in our elections by telling us ahead of time who our nominees should be, who's electable, who's not. No, they love Rip Mitt Romney and John McCain. God bless them. But the best nice, news of Tuesday you know. night, Laura and friends, is that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will run again. That is the best thing that happened last <laughs> Tuesday. Charlie, the, uh, New York was this bright spot, huge yes. bright spot for the Republican Party, and that was because we had Lee Zeldin, who did what Reagan did, frankly, in 1980. He went to New York in the last weeks of the campaign 
it right into the belly of the beast. Lee Elder, when he went to Greenwich Village, I was like, that is the kind of Republican we need to go right in there and say, guess what? This is what I stand for. And he did it after all of those voters moved to Florida, contributing yeah. to Ron DeSantis's huge night uh, in Florida. And by the way, they want him to be RNC chief. There's a big push to get Zeldin to be head of the RNC. There has to be a future for people like Lee Zeldin because he has demonstrated that, that he gets the message and he gets the mechanics. He does both. Kellyanne, you were shaking your head no. I think the 168 is in charge of electing them. I, Ron and McDaniel said she'll run again. They invested, uh, I mean, they moved over $303 million to these candidates at the end, had 100 million voter contacts, 1 million volunteers. But I think Lee's... But, I mean, none of that matters, does it, if we don't I get think the results mattered. we want? We I mean, I, I, think, I like Ron but McDaniel. Oh, hold on. I, but Lee Zeldin's great. He should go take out Kirsten Gillibrand, who's one of the most unremarkable senators and one of the most unremarkable Dartmouth graduates of all time. Oh, well. Um, but but <laughs> very, quickly, very quickly... Very um, quickly, I think that we didn't get some of the results we wanted because people believe the sugar high of these phony polls. And they were Republican leading. Everybody went and cherry picked the polls they liked. We didn't do early Adam voting. Adam Laxalt no, was written five. about. We didn't, we, Repu for all the brilliant do uh, volunteers we had, we don't bank hundreds of thousands of votes in Pennsylvania, which is what they did to get Fetterman elected. 750,000 exactly early right. votes? Whoever is Why aren't we doing that? Whoever's running the RNC, whoever's the I mean, top, come top on. Republicans, they need to do that if they ever want Carrie to. Carrie Lake. Carrie Lake went down tonight. I think that's a hangover from 2020, though, where we were... We well, thought, didn't you know, we learn? Well, Donald yeah, Trump told exactly. people to show up on Election Day. Now people bring their ballots on Election Day, which I think is an oxymoron. Florida doesn't allow that. You cannot bring an early ballot on Election Day. Well, I don't think we can tell people never to early vote. Do you? No, I mean, but you're we did your that early in 2020. On Election Day. No, and you, and right. you can't fix these problems after you lose. You can only, <laughs> yeah. only can fix them after you win. Well, or put the time in beforehand and fix them before. Well, we had Republican governors, as Molly, you pointed out, and state and, legislatures and have, who've never done anything, who don't change Do the it. rules. Yeah. And so you know, we're going to just Brian keep Kemp, going. Brian Kemp did a great job because the voter ID. Yeah prevents you from having an Arizona embarrassment of signature verification. If I give you my ID, that's all you need from me. Right. And to, to, to try to match up signatures okay. and cure it after the fact no. is, just, is so arcane. Ballot curing, that's just the laugh. That's Silly. laughable. All right, panel, great conversation as always. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.